Hello, I have the lovely Pepper Anne with me. Hi, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. My name is Pepper Ann and I am a new true crime Texas author. I wrote a book about a family member who is probably most known as one of the Grayson County Five, but he was the ringleader of it back in 2001 when five inmates escaped a tiny jail in Sherman, Texas, and they were on the run for four days. And I wrote the story about him and his life. And my past experience working with private investigators gave me the knowledge and the guts to be able to write this and continue on with it. So here I am. Uh, did you always know that you wanted to write a book? I've always had an interest in wanting to write a book. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until sometime in 2006, my grandpa Riley passed away and I heard the story about Bob. That's my cousin. Um, and I, I decided I, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to write, but when I heard the story about him, that's when I knew that's what I wanted my first story to be. But I've always had a passion for writing. Yeah. And what made you sit down that day and and say, this is the day this, I'm going to write this story now? Well, it took me a little while to actually do it because once I learned about it, <laughs> I had to research it. And once I started researching it, I realized it was time for me to do it. What made me sit down and actually write the story was what I uncovered prior to the Grayson County uh, jail escape. It was a crime ring here in the state of Texas full of people who were involved in crimes with Bob. And the more I researched about them, the more I discovered that they are still causing problems. And I wanted to expose that. I wanted to write that. So that's what got my butt in the chair and <laughs> made me start <laughs> writing it. Unfortunately, I had to rewrite it several times because those people that I exposed hacked into my computer and deleted my work three times. And so I had, I had to rewrite it multiple times and then on top of that, they also loosened the lug nuts on mine and my family members' tires because they didn't want the story exposed. Well, and yet you still carried on and, and made sure you got it out there. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it was not easy. It wasn't till the final time that I had to rewrite it. I realized this is my story. Um, it's... When your work is deleted that many times, you kind of question, maybe I shouldn't be doing this after all, but it wasn't until that last and final time I realized, yeah, this is mine. I'm not letting anybody get in my way. And then what's the reaction been like since it's come out? Well, I do want to say this. There have been a lot of people who have helped me along the way. I self-published. I'm an indie author. <clears throat> and um, when I first reached out to literary agents, you, even though they didn't take the story because it's a, it's a regional story. So a lot of them didn't see how they could move forward with it. They weren't sure exactly what to do as far as, you know, pro, you know, introducing it to the publishers. Those agents if they're not interested, they don't contact you. They just let it go. But there were agents who wrote me back and they said, this is a great story. You've got to find its place. So those people, I've had friends and family. I've had an amazing editor, literary attorney, all these people, my assistant, Laura, all these people have helped me along the way. And their response that I've had is the same response I had in the beginning which is very, people have been very welcoming to me. They, now that they're yeah, learning the story, bad, they're really bad, interested bad. in it because they want to know why our lives were threatened, why I had to rewrite it so many times. What's in that book? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> people are just so amazing with me. There are a few people who, you know, you're going to have those individuals who kind of question, you know, this or that, but that's life. Majority of the people I've come in contact with, they're very open, and very interested in my story. It's um, a conversation we have frequently in the UK is how supportive the book community is as a whole especially the crime, it seems, um, just everyone is out to help everyone. There doesn't seem to be much maliciousness or jealousy or anything. Everyone just wants to help everyone else, and I think that's really lovely. And I'm glad that's the case in America as well. It is. There's so many different groups. There's so many um, different organizations and, and these types of, you know, opportunities for authors who are, you know, indie authors, and, and even, even those that traditionally publish, people are just amazing. There's so many resources out there. It's just wonderful. It really is. And, you know, when you, when you first get into this field and you're not sure what to expect, it's scary. And you really are on your own in the beginning until you start reaching out to these people. Yeah, and very rare they say no, isn't it? Generally, if you reach out to someone, they'll help you as far as they can, which is just really amazing, isn't it? I don't think you'd find that anywhere else, really. I agree. Absolutely agree. Yeah, because I think we all want to see each other succeed. We want to see everyone make it, you know, and um, it's I've I found that to be so in the writing world and um, on on the spectrum of where I'm at, you know, with, with all of the, and, and I have a lot of friends who are indie authors and I have some who haven't yet published and they're just amazing people. They're just trying to follow a dream, you know? Yeah. And it takes quite something, doesn't it? To sit down and write a book is, is not that easy. So. <laughs> no, it's not. And I don't know if I'm the only one. I don't think I am, but if I get a chapter in my mind I have to stay at the computer until it's done I can't get up I just stayed up all night long because usually that's when it's the quietest and I'm exhausted I have all this coffee I'm drinking but I will not lay down until I get <laughs> at least get the idea of the chapter down oh it's crazy that's maddening it's maddening <laughs> um when you did sit down to start writing, what did you find harder than you were expecting? And what did you find easier than you were expecting? Well, what I found harder than I expected was, so I did a lot of research. In fact, I was researching the whole time I was writing the book. I didn't do my research and then sit down and write. I was researching while I was writing because I was getting more information. I think the hardest part for me was trying to get the feelings and the exact moment down of the situation because it was always changing the more information I got I would go in and I would change it you know I'm gonna give an example so I got court records um court transcripts from a trial and I wrote about that and then I also got police reports and I read those and so then I went back in and I kind of changed it a little again, you know. The easiest part about it for me was describing the locations because I did, I would go to a lot of the places where some of the events happened and take pictures and spend the day, you know, I talked to just random people and get a feel for the area. To me, that was the most fun in it because there wasn't any stress in it you're just describing a place and you're trying to put yourself there <laughs> um how long did it take from when you first sat down until when you actually released it from when I released it 12 years wow yeah because I had to keep rewriting it in <laughs> fact <laughs> at the very last I had received some more paperwork on one of the individuals. And I wanted to explain how they were able to get out of their crimes. And I was waiting to get more paperwork on that. 
that there was someone else who tried to come in and steal my story. And I didn't have any other choice but to go with what I had. I had to stop. I mean, I couldn't keep going. There was more than I wanted to find and I had the opportunity to do it. But after 12 years and so many rewrites, you just have to cut it off. You just have to say that's it. Yeah, I suppose you can do a follow-up, can't you? Um, and keep following up if it keeps changing. Yeah, I've I've um I'm still keeping up with the story, um, and following these people. Like they followed me, but not threatening, not yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> watching them just as much as they're watching <laughs> me. And um <clears throat> you know, I don't know, there may be a, another book come from this later down the road. I don't know. And then I can put that information in there. Yeah. Have you got the writing bug now? Do you want to write more? Do, uh, do I want to write more? Yeah. I do, I do want to write more. So when I first took this on, I knew I wanted to write. I just wasn't sure what genre, you know, and now that I've done this, I've fallen into the true crime genre. So I have a deep interest in stories there. And I I do. I I am I am going to write a second book. Yeah. Awesome. And would you um consider writing fiction, fictional crime? I don't know if I would. I might later down the road after I've had a little more experience with writing. <laughs> what I love about true crime is it's all factual and you can go off of the facts and then you can just go from there. You know, you can tell people things that they didn't know about. <laughs> um, but I may, I may eventually lean over to um, fiction, to crime fiction. And do you have any particular stories that you're focusing on that you want to cover in your next book? Well, I did have a story that I was thinking about, but I've decided not to write it. So I've moved on to another one and it is a local story. And so I'm researching it now to make sure it's a good fit for me. So, but I do, I do have one in mind that I'm very interested in. I imagine in Texas has quite a wealth of stories, um, oh. such a big state and a lot. Uh, yeah, I imagine there's plenty to keep you going. Oh, yeah, there there is quite a bit to write about. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, I imagine it's not far off the, the length of the UK, is it? It's massive. It is. You're absolutely right. It is. There's a lot of crime here in Texas. There's there's a lot of corruption, which I'm sure there is in other states. I mean, all over the place, but there, Texas is is huge. It takes days to get out of here, depending on what part of Texas you're in, I guess. It takes a long time to get out. Um, and there's a lot of stuff to write about. I mean, if, if I just focused on Texas itself, I could just write from stories on end. You know, I don't even have to leave the state. But yeah, this one, the this one caught my interest because it was about a family member. Um, I don't think I had ever really wanted to just focus on one area when I wanted to write originally before I found out about the story. But it wasn't until I heard the story about a family member and why I stayed with it. And that's why <laughs> I wrote about it here in Texas. <laughs> Um, is there anything that you absolutely um, wouldn't write about? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Um, I I honestly don't know. I haven't considered any genres that I wouldn't write about. I do know in crime, in uh, true crime is a very popular genre. And I'm only referring to this one. I, I don't want to write about, unless it's something that I could write about to help solve something or prove something to bring to light. I don't, I don't want to write about children being hurt and abused. I just can't stand that. I mean, if, if there is ever 
a case that I come in contact with and it's something that I can expose to help children, anything I can do to help people I'm going to do, then I would write about it. But that would be one of the most difficult things for me to write about. And I don't know that I'd want to, like I said, unless it would benefit those children, the victims. Yeah, see, it's weird because I find, um, having no children myself, that reading fictional child abuse doesn't really bother me as much because I can't picture my own children, I guess. Then it doesn't really get to me as much. But I guess true crime, when you know it's actually happened, then that's a completely different kettle of fish, isn't it? It's like, mm, no. I I think that it would, um, I know it would anyone to read it. If it's true, um, then you get so angry you want to go after those people you know you just get you just get some ad that you you want to do more than slam the book at them <laughs> yeah <laughs> I can't I can't write about I can't write about child abuse or anyone hurting an animal I can't I just that's so much for me but fiction I could probably read anything in fiction I think because like you said it's not it's it's fiction it's not real so it doesn't yeah bother it may not bother you as much as it would if it were true maybe yeah I think so I mean I definitely I'm I can read child abuse it doesn't you know some people oh no I can't ever read that and I'm like mm, it's all right it's fine <laughs> but yeah because I yeah. don't have children so I'm not picturing my own in there you know whereas I guess people with kids do because they can't help it it's natural but um, yeah. animals, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think those are the two topics that I just, I don't think I could ever write about. Like I said, I, I would write about it if it was something that would help um, the victims or children. If it was something that I could do to help someone, then I certainly, I'd put all that aside and I'd do it. But it, it's one of those gray areas, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, what's the funny or most interesting fact or story you uh, discovered in your research? Oh, boy. <laughs> One of the most humorous things I've discovered in my research is that, so Bob was involved in an eight-hour shootout with another uh, with one of the other fugitives from the Grayson County Five. And they were involved in the shootout against law enforcement and they were holding a married couple hostage in their home. And I got really close to that family. In fact, they are my family. They're, I mean, <laughs> they're, they're part of my family. I love them. I love each and every one of them. Uh, Vincent and Irma were the husband and wife that were held in their home and their uh all of their family is just amazing but the the funny part about it what I learned is that um and I don't know it's probably not as humorous to everyone else as it is to me but what what I find funny is um so Bob Bob ended up releasing that married couple and I don't know why he did it but he did it he worked with the authorities he got him out of the house when I went and I interviewed them for the first time they were so much like our own family. It was, <laughs> I felt like when I sat down and I talked to them, I, I love each and every one of them. I know I keep saying that, but I do. They mean so much to me. I sat down and I felt like I was talking to people that I know in my own group. And I think that's, I think that's funny um, because Irma was the one who, um, when, when, when everything was going on, she was talking to Bob and she was saying, you know, look, we need to end this, you know, let's, she was trying to talk him into it because she had worked in a jail prior to that. So she was familiar with how to handle, you know, convicts. I mean, she knew how to, how to talk to him. And so her training is what her, her training is kind of what I think got Bob's attention. She was able to, to talk to him. I found that humorous because 
there couldn't have been any other home that they could have gone into where that would have happened. Somebody on the inside <laughs> was able to fix it. I mean, <laughs> law enforcement, they were amazing. They got them out. They, they put a stop to it. But in my book, Irma was a hero. Yeah. She was the hero. <laughs> yeah, because she was, she knew, she, well, I mean, she was she was there and she knew how to how to address the situation. Gant was the other offender who uh, he was out of control and there was no way to really control him. But she got the attention of Bob and somehow it just worked out. So to me, that was humorous because um, <laughs> there couldn't have been another house they could have broke into where that would have happened. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, yeah. I, the uh, most interesting thing that I've encountered during this whole thing is that, um, so Bob is a big con artist. I mean, he'd have to be to yeah. wrestle millions of dollars worth of cattle. So what happened was he and his wife at the time had answered ads in cattlemen's uh, newspapers and magazines. And people were wanting a place to pasture their cattle. They wanted someone to care for their cattle. And so they answered, Bob and his wife, Tammy answered the ads and said, we have, you know, we have land, we have pasture, uh, send your cattle here and we'll take care of them. So once they received the cattle, they were supposed to tag on them random. They were supposed to, well, they were supposed to tag them. And so they would know that they were where they were supposed to be and they were supposed to care for them. Well, as soon as they received the cattle, Tammy would go to the banks and get loans on them. See, because Bob had had a prior record. And so he couldn't go and get a, a loan from a bank. It had to be from someone who didn't have a you know, record. So she had to do it. They got the money from the bankers for the cattle. They turned around and they took the cattle to the auction barns and they sold them. So they were making money hand over fist. Well, everybody kind of suspected that Bob was up to something. <laughs> and he was the whole time because he was running all these cons. She was too. And the funny thing about it is he was so likable. People were able to fall for that. And I found that very interesting because they suspected it, but they still, they were still drawn to him. <laughs> You got me. Get it. But that's a con man, right? That's, you know, that, that to me, that was the, one of the most interesting parts of, of the story. If, well, if it had been me, if I didn't, if, well, if I didn't counter the con man, would I hated him? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what happened to his wife then? Did she go to jail as well? So, yeah, so I, I wrote that in the book and I have to be careful how I word it because my literary attorney is going to watch <laughs> everything but to protect me, of course. Of course. Um, so, so what happened was uh, she ended up turning herself into a Texas Ranger. Bob, of course, went on the run. They ended up catching him. In the end, she served some time in the jail. She was supposed to go to another state, to Louisiana, and they were going to have a trial there. Somehow her attorney was able to file paperwork uh, claiming that she wasn't where they had said she was, the, the court system. So she was able to kind of go around that. Um, everyone thought there was going to be an investigation and that she would get prison time for her charges and she didn't wow. today she uh, she oversaw the um financial parts of all those crimes and today she is working for an adoption agency overseeing their finances hey. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why i wanted to bring this out <laughs> Wow. 
um, yeah, <laughs> probably best I don't say anything to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's read the book I just I, I always tell mm -hmm. people read the book the way I have it worded yeah. in there it, it explains <laughs> it oh yeah I will <laughs> totally and it's weird <laughs> because our laws um, and our court systems and uh, the way the police do things are so different as well but I because I've done a degree and we learned a little bit about the American um by the way police interview and stuff and it's as well so yeah <laughs> it's so, yes, I was talking to someone else and they had told me the, even, even your court system or your, your systems are, are different as well, because when I go to get my, um, records and my information, I have to contact the, um, the, the different branches at the courts. And, um, then of course I get the, FOIA records from the FBI. And there's just so many different branches, different places I have to go to. And someone had said that that y'all don't do that. You don't, you don't even have that. <laughs> you don't have that type of system in the UK. So I'm curious to know how you would write a true crime over there. How would you get your records? Uh, we have something called the Freedom of Information Act. So we can request anything. They don't have to give it to us and they can give it to us redacted. But um, if we if we put in a freedom of information request, then we can pretty much request court records and stuff. A lot of it's online anyway. Um, but yeah, that's it. We just have to put in a, a freedom of information and then it goes off to wherever it goes and then they just send it back. So um, how long does it take for y'all to get the information back because when I contacted, you know, like here in the States, the FBI, and I got, you know, requested the FOIA records, it can take them one to two years. Luckily, it only took, for me, it only took about six months to get those, which I is... Don't, yeah, I don't think it's, I think maybe weeks to months, maybe a couple of months at most. I don't think it's very long. I suppose it depends on what you're asking for, but it's not long. Oh, yes, wow. no, and do no y'all <laughs> <laughs> have, do you know if they have the um, police reports in what you're requesting, reports from detectives and everything, statements yeah. and things? Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's all, because um, it's all computerized anyway, so yeah, they have it all, you know, the CPS, which is our um, sort of judicial, and the police have to submit their cases to the CPS, and then the CPS decides whether um it goes to court or not crown prosecution service that's it <laughs> my mind went blank for a second but yeah the crown prosecution service they're the middle people between the police and the courts so even if the police have got a great case if the cps decide that it's not worth taking to court it doesn't go to court and that's oh, it wow. and it ends oh. and it's done yeah see i had to reach out to the district clerk's office um, and that's in, you know, every county has their own each courthouse. So I'd had to reach out to multiple ones. And a lot of them, because these, the, the cases that I was required, that I contacted them about, because they were so old, they had to dig through their records. They didn't have them. And, and a lot of them weren't even in the computers because they didn't get those until 2000 you know and I'm looking at cases from the late 70s all the way to to 2001 you know um, even current so it 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 was a lot of the research took so much time and it was because those individuals had to dig and go look and I even went to courthouses myself <laughs> and I did some digging so so much involved uh, things you don't <laughs> listen not everybody who if you haven't written a book and you don't know you're gonna know before it's all over with what's entailed then you'll decide if you want to write another one <laughs> yeah. you won't know till you're done with the first one <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it 12 years uh waited years for information going to courthouses yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you're prepared for that that's fine <laughs> 
but to be honest with you, my next one won't take that long. This one is because I got all the threats. I'm pretty sure my next one is, not, is going to be nothing compared to this one as far as the, the writing time. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> then, yeah. You know, definitely not the threats. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm amazed that you carried on. That's really impressive. I don't think I could have had the, the nerve to do that, but that's awesome. Thank you. And um, there is something I haven't really shared with anyone that someone had said. Um, I had reached out to someone. So when Bob was going through the courts and being through his sentences, sentencing phases and everything, um, one of the judges compared him to a well-known famous outlaw from the 1800s. And I had found out that that outlaw had a family member who had written a book. So I reached out to that individual because I had thought this was in the beginning and I thought, well, maybe they could give me some pointers. Maybe I could just talk to them, you know, about writing a book. I told them what my story was about and I was blown away at their reaction it it stopped me in my tracks the individual said when I said yeah I'm, I'm going to expose a bunch of people and they said well why won't you just why can't you just accept that one's been caught and leave it at that and that angered me <laughs> that put fuel on the fire that hadn't yet begun to burn and so when she said that to me um, I realized I was going to be running into a lot of that and it did, but regardless, I still hung in there. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Good. <laughs> I just can't believe somebody would think that if you know that there is wrong in the world, why wouldn't you step up and say something? Yeah. Because if people don't, then it carries on. People need to speak out and it really irritates me that people just like, oh, you know, it's like, no, say something for God's sake, please. You know, otherwise it's just going to carry on. And yeah, I totally agree with that. It really irritates me as well. I just, I, could, I couldn't get over <laughs> that statement. And then, of course, it was about a family member and look, he is guilty. He's where he needs to be. I'm not trying to get him out. I wouldn't do that because he doesn't need to be out. Um, but these other people don't either. That that's what <laughs> that's what hit me. <laughs> no, it's not okay. No, he's not the only one that should be in. Get out of my way. Let me keep going. That was kind of my attitude with it. I know you you have to be. I was about as professional about that as I could be, if you if you can be, you know. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of biting your tongue, I imagine, and. <laughs> deep breaths <laughs> it hurt a lot yeah <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> um so when did the book actually come out so it actually came out August the 13th uh last year 2020 uh 2022 excuse me yeah and it's been out ever since um and have you found it hard being um, self-published or have you uh, enjoyed the experience of having control? It was kind of difficult. My assistant, Laura, has been amazing because she's been in this field a lot longer than I have. So I didn't, there were things that I didn't know beforehand <laughs> and she had to educate me about the process. <laughs> didn't know I thought once it got out there that was that was it I didn't know that I had to market it like I did <laughs> and I've been doing that but if I had the option to publish it traditionally and what I know now I wouldn't do it I would stick with self-publishing I like the control that I have okay. um it's a learning curve for me, but it is for anybody. There's so much you don't realize that you have to do to get it out there. Once you figure it out and you know how it works, it's so worth it. I have a lot of people who have, well, I've, I've read, I've read online and you do too. You see how people, these authors 
they post online and they're ready to give up and we all get to that point, you know, ready to walk away from it. But you, it's so important to be involved in groups with people who are doing the same thing you're doing and learn from them. Because if I didn't have Laura or all these other people in my form, I wouldn't have known what to do. And I would have probably walked away as well. Yeah. I always uh, joke with the authors that I'm friends with. I'm like, I'm part interviewer and part blogger and part author um, ego booster because they're like, oh, I can't do it. And it's so hard. I'm like, shut up. You're amazing. It's fine. Like, you're, you're fine. <laughs> and I do. And then, like, there's one author in it and they're fine. And then another author's like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Not for God's sake, really. <laughs> <laughs> And you feel their tears, you feel their pain, but it's like, get up, just get up, keep going. You know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah, been I've... where they are and I've been where you are and I, I get it. It's, oh, it's emotional. Nobody tells you that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I know and I understand where they're coming from and I see and I see a little bit from the other side because I'm so invested. So I've learned a lot as well. So I get it. But I'm like, shut up. You're absolutely amazing. I've read your books. They're awesome. Like, seriously, you can't quit. I'm not letting you. I will come round your house and I will sit and make you write. <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> I'm not joking either. I think they know I'm not joking, but I really would. <laughs> so, yeah, that tends to work, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> we need more motivational people like you in the world, for sure. <laughs> yeah. See, I didn't know, um, Laura had told me, and I'm sure others know this, you have to, you have to get your work out there. That is something we all know. And sometimes your second or third book is where people start to notice you. And that's because that's where people really are more familiar with. You. And I didn't know that. I had always, always under the impression your first book, and if it's, it's something people love there, you can move on, but that's not the case. It's different. And Unless you're very unique, you know, there's some that just, you know, obviously the Where the Cool Dad Sing is one of those books, isn't it? That was her debut and that just went mental and, and you know, it's now a film and stuff, but those are so rare, you know, sometimes oh, yeah. it's, you know, four, fifth, sixth book even, and then you're like, oh, who's this person? And then, you know, you go back and read all their other books, but yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. and I think because of lockdown, the market just became absolutely saturated because everyone's like, oh, finally, I've got time to write a book. <laughs> oh, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More, more writers than ever. I think six times as many or something I thought I saw um, people oh. releasing books on KDP and, and things. So, yeah, it's, it's harder than ever to get noticed. So, yeah, anyone doing it has got the most respect from me because I've seen how tough it is to get yourself out there oh I agree and if you can get people reading your book that just makes it all that just shows how how more impressive to you know to be with those people and and I think those individuals who and I've run into a lot of people who it's easy to have your confidence knocked when you're you're learning it and you're you put a lot of self-doubt in in yourself we all have done that, especially with the writing phases. There were times when I think I, I just, I can't do this anymore. This is too much. Well, the rewrites and, and it was, they weren't run on by my editor. <laughs> they were because the work was being deleted, you know? And so those times that that happened, I even doubted myself. And I think we all do. It's, it's almost a given, you know, we just have to be, more supportive of one another I think yeah well I always say I saw an event a couple of years ago at um, in a cry festival and um, Stephen King was talking to Linda Barkley and Linda Barkley said Stephen King you know do you ever sit down and think you know that this is going to be rubbish you're Stephen King you know and he's like yeah so every time I send a book to my editor I think this is going to be the time they're going to say what the hell is this and that's Stephen King that's written, what, 40, 50, 60 books? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And even he mm -hmm. said, yeah, every time. And this was only two years ago. So if he suffers with imposter syndrome, everyone else is absolutely fine. <laughs> it's perfectly true. normal. And I was really shocked 
really shocked that he was like, yeah, I've every time. Really? But you've written so many incredible books, you know, and everyone, you're one of the most famous authors in the world. But no, every time I since my edit, I think they're going to come back and say, what on earth is this rubbish? Wow. <laughs> but as Stephen King, you know, you would think that they would just be open to anything he comes up with because he's a best-selling author. I mean, come on. How could he think that? But in reality, that's in his mind. And, and perhaps know. the pressure's higher because of the expectation, maybe. So, sure. you know, perhaps there's more pressure because he is a best-selling author and, you know, he's expected to produce something incredible. So, yeah, perhaps it's that. I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I could understand that. Yeah. I mean, the the reasoning behind it, like you said, the expectations and because he is, he is an amazing author. I mean, he's so well loved and very yeah. creative. Wow. That surprises me. I had no idea that he said yeah. that, but. It was, um, it was really funny. They were both uh, beamed in live. Obviously, I think Limmer Barkley is Canadian, isn't he? So Stephen came from America and Limmer Barkley into this little Scottish town. And they were both talking about their times working as toilet attendants. Just two boys having a chat. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Just some random conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about books at all. Into a book festival. But, you know, that's what boys do, isn't it? So, yeah. Right. It, was, <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you made a lot of um, reader and author friends since you started writing? <laughs> yes. In fact, that's a majority of what I have are reader and author <laughs> friends. And they're so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I have a lot of people who, when they read my book, they... Um, so, you know, we all love as authors, we love to have people rate our books, review them and go <laughs> online and, and people do that. But there are some of those individuals who they would rather email me, which I'm completely fine with. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's wonderful. And they tell me, and most of their emails pretty much fall along the same lines and they had to reread certain sections to make sure what they read is what they really read because it was the the story is just so it's just almost unbelievable you know and then they want to know when my next story is coming out <laughs> and I just think that is so awesome yeah so a majority of my friends are writers and readers and you know it, it's it's amazing yeah I just kind of fell into that group of people and I love it it's amazing yeah it is I love it as well um and if you're able to spend a day with any author dead or alive who would you like to spend a day with oh I love to read I really <laughs> love to read so I have 700 and I thought it was 781 but I have 791 books total <laughs> in my office I can show you I have bookshelves I have a bookshelves and one of my favorite authors I've got her book right here she's only written one but she has an amazing story her name is Nina Wilmer she wrote 40 Autumns have you ever heard of this no this is an amazing book I it's nonfiction. She's only written the one. This lady is so educated, but she's the one I'd want to spend the day with. I know that sounds crazy. She's probably not as well known as any of the others, but her story was so, it, it resonated with me. Um, I just, she tells about, it's, it's her family story of how they survived with courage and survival on both sides of the Berlin Wall when the Berlin Wall was up. And then when it came down, she tells about how her family was able to reconnect. Oh, wow. I just, when I read this story, I just, I was so drawn into it. I could feel the emotions. And that's the author I'd want to spend the day with. 
that's that's the one somebody well, that <laughs> yeah we need to get her on a bestsellers list I don't know if this book is I don't know if it's made it up there but it needs to be up there this lady is awesome um did you message her and tell her how much you enjoyed her book when you read it I I put a review online I put a I put a review online but I have not reached out to her I may do that I have you never know I, you never know what might happen if you do that's true that's yeah. true yeah I may do that I never thought about it maybe I'll do that this afternoon I um I met Kathy Reichs last year and um reading her books is what got me interested in forensics which is what kind of led me to doing a forensics degree and I knew that the chances are that I'm not going to meet her maybe ever again so I made sure that I got in line and I told her you inspired me to do a degree and I think everyone was so sick of and like, oh we love you we love your books and I think she was a bit taken aback because I'd said something different and she was like oh wow and she's like are you going to keep up with it I said yeah absolutely and yeah it was really nice but I was like I've got to take this opportunity because I don't think I'll you know she, she doesn't come over here very often and it was amazing it's such a cool thing to have said that I've done so yeah I made sure I think that is an amazing story um and that kind of that inspires me to reach out to to Miss Wilner and talk to her just put it out there because you never know that's, That's it. awesome. Imagine how much you love receiving the emails and she's going to love it too. So, That's yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay, I may do that. Yeah. And, and I was also impressed because she wrote about, what also interested me is she wrote about her family and so did I. And I think that might be part of the reason why I more or less favored it because she knew how to tell a side of it that no one else <laughs> could. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough story to tell, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, I yeah. love I'm fascinated by that stuff but there's just not enough hours in the day or days in the year to to read everything and learn everything that I'd love to but yeah I find that fascinating as well yeah I do too I'll, I'll do that I think I'm going to do that I'm going to reach out to her I gotta think about what to say but thanks for the idea yeah <laughs> you're welcome you'll have to let me know how you get on you may never hear back from her, but you might. So you just never know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, we don't know what will come of it. I'll let you know for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't think I have any more questions for you unless you think there's anything I haven't asked you that you want to desperately tell us. <laughs> I think the only thing I want to say, I just, I learned so much from so many people. And I just think that it's so important for people if they have a dream and if they want to write or any creatives out there whatever they want to do and not necessarily writing if you're a song if you're a, if you're an artist if you're a songwriter whatever you do just stay with it I mean I did I hung in there and look what happened to me I just think that if we just continue to pursue our goals and our dreams in life we don't know what'll come of it and I want people well, to, to right. know that. I think we need to continue to lift one another up. And we need to be reminded that we all deserve that. We deserve to be able to see our dreams. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, so just before we go, would you like to tell everyone where they can get your book from and where they can find out more about you if they'd like to? Absolutely. So the probably the most important place you could learn anything about me and and find out about my book is my website it's uh, pepperannauthor.com and Anne has an e at the end of it I have a blog I, I'm talking about all kinds of things in the blog so check it out if you have a chance you can enter in the title the notorious Texas swindler and you can buy it anywhere online not just Amazon it is in so many online stores that if you type the title in it'll pop up and it's also available in libraries all across the U.S. so um and it's international and it's it's here in the states it's all over the place you just enter in the title and you can find it awesome well thank you very much this has been great <laughs> thank you and thanks for having me i had so much fun <laughs>